All right, uh, shall we? Do it in your best Texas accent. <laughs> see, 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 I would do that, except when Rain talked in the Texas accent, it was used as ammunition against him for years. So I'm smarter than that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sweethearts and lovelies, and welcome to Doctor Who Reviews. It's me, Fresno Inferno. Where is that British person who might actually probably be from Texas? Uh, stuck on the other side of a heat barrier where we're sealed into a rural village in England while the devil's appearing. Ah! Or, you know, he's not here this week. Couldn't make it. Uh, whatever. Uh, but we have some people here to discuss a Doctor Who story. The John Pertwee story, The Damons. So, there's me, Fresno Inferno. And to my virtual left, he thinks the Thriller video is the world's longest tension. It's Kuchiri. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to show you some uh, old henches from the like the eighties and stuff because they. <laughs> it's like the 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 monsters goes off to get a cup of tea while all the poses are going on. <laughs> <laughs> and to my virtual right, but not politically. Anything can happen on Halloween. Your toenails grow long and your hair turn green. It's Skunky Usurper, better known as Cat. I wish my hair was green. Well, hair dye in a dream, kids. Hair dye in a dream. Well, I mean, so I'm blonde. All I have to do is go jump in a pool back in the 90s. Uh, so, you know. All the chlorine. Ah, exactly. Well, so, The Damons is the final serial of season eight of classic Doctor Who, John Pertwee's second, and uh, the first to have Joe Grant as uh, uh, Katie Manning as Joe Grant, rather. And also the first to introduce Roger Delgado as the master, who's in this one. Wasn't uh, he like in every serial of the season? Wasn't He sure was. He popped yeah. up every time to fuck to fuck around. It was it was the deal that season. I, I love I, I love how like in the uh first part, like someone's like, Oh yeah, the magister says this, and the doctor's like, ah, of course, the master. And then like, you know, 40 <laughs> years later we have Missy going around saying her name's Missy, and it's like, oh wait, you, you have to be told that that was the master after 12 episodes? Okay. Well, it's fifteen hundred years in time and space dull dulls your memory a little bit, you know? Hmm. This was an interesting little serial, five parts. There was some weird behind-the-scenes shenanigans behind that. They uh, only had 25 episodes this year. Uh, afterwards, they would have 26, so they would split things up evenly between six-part episodes and four-part stories. But this one's a fiver. Uh, just because Could have been a three it worked. They had a four. They had four six, four six, and then they have five episodes left, so they used it on this. They might have done a six part or with it, but some behind the scenes shenanigans happened, including uh, John Pertwee and the director Christopher Barry, who's a veteran Doctor Who director. He directed the very first Dalek story. Uh, they had a bit of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Tiff. Uh, to quote the uh, lovely TARDIS wiki, TARDIS dot wiki, that is, relations between John Pertwee and Christopher Barry are already strained after plans to film on Sunday had to be shelved as Pertwee was performing one of his regular cabaret engagements in Portsmouth on Saturday night and wanted Sunday off to rest. Despite Barry already having missed his sister's wedding to be on the set, Barry sent a telegram, which was read at the wedding reception by the best man, wishing his sister and brother-in-law best wishes, and explaining, in a message with a double meaning, Doctor Who has prevented me from coming. Mm. That's great. Yeah, I couldn't be here because of Doctor Who. The show or the man? Yes. Honestly, considering like what happens in this very first one with the devil's hump and all the like <laughs> double and triple innuendo, saying Doctor Who prevented me from coming is not the best way to word it. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. We should man, talk about it. man, the doctor is such a cock block. Jeez. <laughs> no hanky panky in the TARDIS is what they said back in the eighties. But well, we should talk about Doctor Who. He's got this fun little scene in the opening with Joe, where he's working on his car. She's well. The actual story opens with some with real spooky atmosphere. You know, dark and stormy night in a rural English village, and 
fella staggering home drunk from the bar, and uh, something gets him in the night. Woo! I like the fact that this is never explained. We don't know what it is that gets him. Like, pretty much, like, I don't even think the gargoyle is alive at this point. No, no. But, like, that doesn't happen nothing gets him. him. What gets him? That's a good, good question, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, the, yeah. they 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 say he died of fright. Yeah. So did he just see the wannabe weeping angel or <laughs> wannabe weeping angel? Oh, <laughs> oh god! Oh, this is gonna be a winner, I can tell. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. the master really gave him a scare. <laughs> Either way, he dead, and we've got the jack. We got and possibly the, the dog's dead too. One out in cereal. One out in cereal. It's the serious sucks. Tell us where they can find us for us. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) we can do a little more than that. (laughs) Like talk about Doctor Who himself. That is the that is the end of this. Is that the cereal sucks? So you know. (laughs) Well, well, we're just giving it all away. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, we'll see what happens after an an hour and a half or so, or however long it takes me. But we got Doctor Who. John Pertwee, the uh, we we all enjoy a good John Pertwee, and he's here with Joe Grant, his best companion. Uh, yeah, yeah, his best companion. I thought I know, that was I Bessie. Know. Bessie is his best companion. <laughs> Bessie's his best companion. And everyone's talking about this uh, TV show broadcast that's going to be happening, where uh, ooh, this archaeologist is going to dig into a barrow and find this. Sacred tomb or some shit. He's wow, gonna go six it? inches into the devil's hump. <laughs> Damn. That's yes. That's the true devil. Double on time. You knew what you were saying. I didn't say anything. Not you, the writers. They gotta mm. penetrate six inches into the devil's hump. Uh man six inches or woman six inches? Yes. <laughs> to be fair, it looks exactly the same as when they started, so a man six inches. Ooh. <laughs> oh God. We also have an important little bit of uh Chekhov's gunning happening here as the doctors talk about how oh there's no such thing as magic and all this bullshit. And then the car starts to move on its own. <laughs> It's <laughs> Betsy, the, the precursor of P9, Betsy. I love Betsy. <laughs> Betsy, best character. Kat, you just love the machinery assistance of Doctor Who, don't you? Yes. Because they don't fucking talk half the time. Yeah, and when they do, do, it's K9 and he's fantastic. He is. He Dog. Is. Dog. 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 Oh, God. Robert, don't you right. Yeah. But the, the, the Chekhov's gone here, so the Doctor has a. Uh, remote control for the car. And he's like, oh, you thought it was magic, but you know, who? It, there's no such thing as magic, only science, which, well, when the Moffat era comes around, we're going to have some words about that. Well, oh. I mean, then you got later on this era with all the chanting and the, you know, praying and the... Penetrating... The, so they take great efforts to be to do because it was the seventies and they were all about this chariot of the god shit. Where it's like, oh no, there's no, you know, it was aliens that did everything on planet Earth because all of the magic and black rituals and stuff that's actually specifically alien bullshit. Ooh. Doctor, we must go to the Devil's End where they played this game called Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, oh my God, a Doctor Who D and D episode. Would- well, maybe not D and D, considering what's his counselors and all that shit. But a Doctor Who tabletop episode would be wild. I, I, I like to roll to reverse the polarity. <laughs> <laughs> he actually uses that in the serial. They sure do. Yeah. Uh, yeah so you know, Take Doctor Who is all science. You know, oh, there's no such thing as magic science, and then and then he sees the broadcast and is like. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. We got to go and stop these idiots. Holy fuck. They're about to unleash the fucking devil. 
Oh, God. While this is going on, there's a woman who claims to be a witch. A white witch. Look, if a lady comes up to me, says she's a witch, and that her last name is the name Hawthorne, and that great evil is about to be unleashed, I'm going to fucking listen to her. Uh, Just saying. Should also mention, given the uh, timing of the uh, story, we're doing this for Halloween, which... And this story is set on Halloween's uh, diametric opposite, uh, Belting. And so they're going to open this this uh, barrow tomb thing at the stroke of midnight on Beltane, which uh, you should not fuck with the mystical magical forces. But they're doing it. But they're doing it. Woo. Well, I like this one a lot in this one. She's so <laughs> fun. Oh, she's really fun. I, I also, like, there's stuff that just doesn't make sense. Like, all of a sudden the wind starts blowing and, like, I guess the cop was going to kill her, and then she starts chanting, the wind stops blowing, but then it's revealed later on the master controls the wind. He is the one that passes the gas, so I don't know. What what, what a choice of phrasing. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fucking wild, because usually I'd say, it's magic. Like, it's a magic spell, and she counters it with her white magic, but... Uh, the story is all like, no, magic's not real. It's actually incredibly advanced science. So it's like, what? Well, from what we, from my basic understanding is that the entire thing is based off of not only your emotions, but also your ability to control psychic energy. And mm-hmm. so the master is controlling the psychic energy and is following a quote unquote ritual that is governed by the demons and they use their rituals and everything to be able to control this stuff. And so mm-hmm. he's using this, he's trying to kill Miss Hawthorne and it doesn't work because she do- basically does a counter ritual using her own feelings. And I think this is supposed to be our idea as to how the ending is going to happen is her fervent faith and belief in her ability to be a witch is what's, Going, is what is controlling the powers here essentially and helps calm down this power now, quote, unquote. Let's, see. let's see if the story was about that i'd be way fucking vibing with it as it stands i'm like it's it's, it's good 70s doctor Who, but like that would put it a class above and that yeah that does help uh, explain the ending a little bit but you really wish they focused on this a little bit. yeah it, it's one of those cases where they really needed to explain a lot more than they did yeah I do, I do love consider, you're saying that about the counter spell. I do love though that later in the episode when she tries to go meet with Mister Magister, who <gasps> is actually the master, he does, he tries to do his hypnosis, which has I don't know if it's ever this has ever happened before since the master was introduced at the uh, top of the season. It doesn't work on her. She just sort of like look whatever. Stop being creepy. Yeah, smack. That might be, that might be the first time it did not work, but it's all for naught because he just had, snaps his fingers and has his lackey fucking kidnapper. But you know, props to his Hawthorne. You outfoxed the master. This is a big accomplishment for Joe late in like the master's last story when when she resists his hypnotism. So we got to give Miss Hawthorne a W. So uh, this is me raising my hand with a question, uh, teacher. I have question. Yes. Um, why the fuck did he do this exactly? Why did he do what? Why did he kidnap her? So she wouldn't ruin the ritual or call attention to him or something. Yeah, but like, why? Cat, uh, cat will explain later. <laughs> uh, because he's. Because he's evil or something. <laughs> this is 100% writer's got to eat, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's 70s Doctor Who, and it's not four parts long. It kind of is. I mean, you could argue part four is entirely a writer's got to eat. There's a, some stuff I would say part two. Part two. Part two and part three could have been one episode. I mean. Yeah. I think you could probably condense this down into like two episodes. Yeah. yeah, it's a three in our chat and three earlier, but no, I, I love how the wind, even though Delgado is not controlling this wind, but I mean, somehow 
blows a uh, sign, spins it around, and gets the doctor and Joe lost. Man, w- wouldn't it be nice to, I don't know, use a blue box? Well, to, well, I, I had a point, but to be fair, to be fair, this is the Earthbound era where the TARDIS isn't fucking working right. Mm-hmm. And indeed, the TARDIS does not appear at all in this serial, or is even mentioned. Like, then doesn't he not even get his, like, um, TARDIS back until, like, late season nine? Three doctors. Yeah. Uh, But they occasionally let something fuck around with it. The Time Lords might send them on a mission or something. to So they have a story that's in outer space. But for the most part, he can't fuck with the TARDIS. Right. What else was I gonna? What else was I gonna say here? Yeah, you had a point. I did have a point. Now I gotta get back on that track. You have to rejoin the Senpai Club and discover your point. <laughs> I will say I do love the build of part. Oh, oh, right now I remember. Now I remember. You said that you could hack this down into three parts. They kind of did because after the season aired they uh did a omnibus edit where they just edited it down into one 90 minute chunk yeah, so, right. so you can definitely so yeah that's about it's like three and a half episodes so there's a little fat that could have been true but you know Roger's got to eat you gotta you gotta add, make five episodes but I do love part one this slow build where they've got the team the TV cameras up there at the barrow and the professor who's just like, oh, get the camera out of my face. I just want to open the blessed thing and find the treasure. He's just a real ornery asshole. And Miss Hawthorne's trying to stop it. And then we get to the end of part one and all hell fucking breaks loose. Now, uh, I couldn't hear very well, like, um, well, the audio in this it. episode was atrocious. Yeah, so I kind of misheard what he was saying, and uh, I heard something completely different. Um, and this is what uh, I heard. What did you hear? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god! I kept hearing <laughs> Absol. Uh, Absol. It's Absol. A Z A L. I had or heard Absol. So, yeah, you know. yeah. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I watched it on a uh, on the uh, Blu-ray set. Gonna, the zoom in a little bit. Season eight. But another fun fact about uh, the master and his uh, coven of devil worship, or whatever the fuck it is, when Roger Delgado is doing his chants, the chanting is actually just "Mary had a little lamb" backwards. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Which is so great. I, God, Delgado looks so fucking cool in that red cloak as the arch wizard or whatever the fuck. I mean, like, hang on, let me bring this back up. Did Did you not get a good look at it? Because I mean, look. Yes, yes, I know. I, know. I, I made the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. It's... It's an incredible it hard on it. A solid, a solid, a solid hard. <laughs> Five out of seven. Uh, and then at the end of the first part, our cliffhanger singer is uh, a statue's eyes turning red. Visine, anyone? And also, Doctor Who is frozen fucking solid. Yeah. Because he, he was too late to stop them from opening the barrow and unleashing the devil upon the fucking world. Yes. Man. Which is, is why, because while all this is happening, uh, the brigadier's out for the fancy dinner or something. And uh, Benton and Yates are, are just hanging out in the unit. They're watching rugby and eating corned beef sandwiches. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, lads. Oh, I'll bet you. Yeah, I'll bet you. Like, I'll bet you this thing wins. And then part two is like, oh, we should turn it over to Dick. Oh, fuck, everything's fucked. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Doctor Who is frozen solid, which would be a great way for John Pertwee to take a week off, except he'll get better. <laughs> he had a to go to. 
the, the professor who wanted to open the devil's hump is fucked, but Doctor Who is going to be okay. Because, you know, he's a time lord. He's made of stern stuff. He's got two hearts, which baffles the doctor. Which the, the other doctor. Which, funny thing, they only introduced that when John Pertwee debuted. That's only, that, that beat is only like a year and a half old. of so like, what? What? Oh, I can't be hearing the stuff that's called bright. It must be an echo. It's weird. I'm offensively British. <laughs> Uh, Doctor Who has to defrost while Benton and Yates come come to the village in the helicopter, which we'll be talking about the helicopter later. Or we could not. <laughs> or we could not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's Halloween. Trick or treat. We we could give you the treat, or we could trick you. Okay. Mm hmm. Trick you. It was uh, unused footage from a James Bond film. Ha! Got your rain. Ah! Trick! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, what 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 footage was it? Well, we'll have to find out. I... Maybe. No, honestly, I think Kateri was right about part two being the writer's gonna eat part because I can't remember half the shit that happened to it. Uh, I wrote down unit being worthless like usual because they were there's like a whole two minute scene of them just calling random people and saying random stuff that makes no sense. Do you know anything? Um, Do you know anything? No! Fuck! Ding. I mean, Where's half this of person? the serial is basically Unit goes to fight somebody. Unit gets beat up. Unit goes to fight somebody. Unit gets beat up. Unit you know, goes one, to fight somebody. Unit gets one, beat up. One day bullets are going to work. One day. <laughs> It'll never work. That's literally um, a brigadier line. I wrote yeah, down... No. I wrote down so we're seeing the master praying. Oh, they find footprints. Oh, the I wrote hoof down, prints. Giant hoof prints. Man, yeah. those those are giant numbers. Should we go and see, sir? No, I've seen Godzilla. I'm out of this place. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Godzilla, we have uh, the cop you, the cop you mentioned. Uh, oh, you know, he's, he's sealing up the barrel. But also, you know, it's happy times. Because he's two days away from retirement. And then he gets to hang out with his granddaughter. Hey, what's that noise? Hey, I'm going to go fishing. In hell, because of the devil. Yeah. I wrote down, you saw the devil, what did he look like? And I put down, wait, at least seven incarnations. <laughs> Satan's pit, anyone? No? Okay. <laughs> God. Uh, the Magister line is, you know, where I said Misty sitting in the corner for a full season without 12 figuring out. Oh, yeah. there's, a, there's, there's an exposition scene where they're just giving... Uh, the Brigadier, everything. So it's like, oh, this is going on, this is going on, and one more thing, sir. The 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 master's behind it all. And the Brigadier's like, yep, it's a Saturday. Oh, <laughs> God damn it, not again. Oh, get my gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but speaking of people getting old, we have, a. Uh, it's Benton who finds Hart, uh, oh, Hawthorne, <laughs> which is, is incredible that I didn't even think to, like, Gagger or nothing? He's like outside the church in Gavera Cleary Hill. Help! 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 Help me! <laughs> Which is nice. Except when they go down into the under the basement of the church and find this goddamn satanic altar and get accosted by this fella. And the then this part is a funny of unit gets beat up. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. See, well, to be fair, magical intervention happens. Well, magic, uh, maybe scientific intervention. Because he steps on the thing that you're not supposed to step on and it scrambles his brain, attacked by the elementals. And so the <laughs> but this is great. This is this is a fucking great subversion. You think, oh no, they're gonna get captured again for an episode. And then they walk outside and <laughs> the fucking devil is looming over him, and this guy is shooting a new shotgun. And he just fucking vanishes and the tree is lit on fire. I, I want to talk about how it's clear that they forgot they had to uh, write a cliffhanger to this episode. So oh. we just... So we, we they find a spaceship and then, you know, the doctor is starting to do his explanation. Then it just cuts to a random dude in an outfit running into uh, the where they're at. And it's like, cliffhanger. It's like... Uh. That is such a bad cliffhanger. 
I, I guess it's supposed to be like, oh no, it's a fucking monster, but it really is just like, okay, so here's my ex. <laughs> you yeah, see a hundred thousand years ago, and there's just this dude in a onesie pajama running with a the, the dumbest mask with a tongue so sticking bad. out. Oh, it's, the you gargoyle guys make... is doing the blep. I fucking oh, love Doctor Who, y'all. This, <laughs> this is Bach the gargoyle, who's basically the monster of the episode. You know, you need something for unit to shoot at ineffectively. That that's what this thing is. And then the, the cliffhanger is not even resolved that well afterwards. It's cold iron. He holds up cold iron and drives the fucking thing away. It's it's like, oh my god. And then there's like literally no, nothing that happens in like episode three, really, for me, other than the fact it starts, it, like I'm getting MAGA flashbacks watching this. The master's what? trying to make Britain gray again. Oh, 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 well, there is, there is the, uh, the heat shield. That's a major plot point. You mean you mean they built the wall? Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> nah. See, here's the thing. I didn't get to see like the last like eight minutes of this episode, but I was already like half checked out during this episode, so I did not care. <laughs> Damn. I was very checked out during all these episodes. Dang, really? Shit. It's like, I'm sorry, but this was not a good serial. Oh, uh, okay. Which is weird because, like, I was looking and, like, it apparently got ranked, like, 11th out of, like, 60 random stories on some list or something. Like, it's, how? We have, we have to remember, these are the same people who ranked <laughs> very highly. That's true. I mean, despite yeah. the racism. <laughs> Well, well, we'll 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 get more of those thoughts as we go, but just to try and get a sense of the thing, uh, yeah, the town gets sealed off by a heat shield, and it's it's wild because there's this guy who's just driving in, and all of a sudden he bails out of his van, and then it, and then uh, we get, oh, hey, this cereal stole the budget from the Velocipaster. They can afford to <laughs> the effects of a car on fire. <laughs> So the brigadier is trapped on the outside of this thing because you can't get through. It's his, he he pokes his baton at it and it, at the tip of it catches on fire and it's like oh, that's not good. They try to drop bombs on the top that don't work either. So that's there. some cool effects here. He's like the, I like how he threw something and they made it explode in midair. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's a neat effect when they throw the things and they. Up in the pot of smoke. I think I think I did was they just had a detonator on the side of the thing when you toss it. You just like I, yeah. I don't know the exact technical thing, but it it, is, it does look like a good effect. It had enough flash powder. Yeah. And so now, um, yeah. Around this time, the doctor gets a group of people into a pub, including Hawthorne, and they're. Doing all the explanation, they're doing the science, magic, science, magic, science, magic argument, all that stuff. Ooh. What if all these horned what if all these horned mythological figures and gods that humanity's been working with over the years were actually the same thing? And they were aliens. Because because nothing in Doctor Who was invented by human fucking beings. It's all fucking aliens. Aliens. I mean, are you new around here? That's uh, that's kind of like the norm. Yeah, yeah I, I know. It's just aliens. Aliens. It's always aliens. I, I just imagine the cat, uh, the guy with the fragile hair from the History Channel. Yeah, yeah. Aliens. I, swear <laughs> God, I looked up his name on the last one, didn't I? I don't know. I swear I said his fucking name on this show. Anyway, they're building a uh, uh, a science tool with Osgood. To, no, not uh, that one. Oh, the other Osgood. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is. I, I'm sure this this might be this might have been where Moffat got the name. But there's this a uh, science. There's this unit scientist guy named Osgood who's with the Brigadier and the doctors trying to tell him how to build this uh, energy converter thing to 
get through the heat shield and get inside the town and save the day. And his name's Osgood, which is like Petronella Osgood from the Moffat years. But so question. They they deactivate the heat shield. The master still summons a giant ten foot demon guy. Well he does well he he well they de they deactivate it after he summons the monster. Well no 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 what I'm saying is what was the unit going to do against the demon guy? I mean Uh well, it's a good thing that unit weren't there. Well, actually, yeah, they don't do much, but you know. No, no, actually, they actually don't do anything for the rest of serial. Let's uh, <laughs> let's be honest. They uh, uh they finally yeah, get yeah. in during the final part, and there's just a scene where all of them's just shooing the wannabe weeping angel. The wannabe weeping angel is just standing there, like, huh? Get the bazooka! But it does lead <laughs> to the. And this has been an iconic immortal line. Uh, Jenkins, chop the wings there. Five rounds rapid. Just that matter of fact Britishness. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. That, go that goggle chap shooting. You know, I, I kind of do want a unit miniseries or like a series now just so that it can see them be competent for once. Funny you should ask that. They oh, are uh, out on Disney Plus. I know they are. That's why I'm saying I kind of want it now. Because <laughs> before I, I didn't want, want it. Now I yeah. kind of want it because, like, well, you, we know why you don't want it. We you know, know why I don't want it. Hey, by the way, Frez, uh, trivia fact: What's the next time the master appears after this episode? I know. I know. <laughs> this is why he he gets arrested at the end of this, which is why he's in jail in that. And then yeah, just this game with them. It's a fun little story known as Aquatic Silurians. Yeah. Hey, else. quick, let's let's edit the wiki again. <laughs> I might be banned, I don't know. Okay, we got we should talk about the helicopter stuff. This is the uh this is because this was the set this was the early 70s, this was the John Pertwee era. You gotta have at some point in your fucking story somebody going ape shit on a motor vehicle as fast as they fucking can, probably John Pertwee. Well, it's somebody else and John Pertwee. Yeah, so one of these assholes steals the helicopter and is trying to run down John Pertwee while he's driving with Joe and Bessie. And <laughs> It does not end well for him because, well, Joe gets, flies out of the car and gets bonked on the head and knocked out for half an episode. Much like uh, John Pertwee did. Well, oh, what a lovely story beat. And then the person gets knocked out and taken out of the story for half an episode. But then the guy <laughs> drives into the, flies into the fucking heat shield and explodes. And that's the reused footage from James Bond slash Enemy of the World. Anyway, so I missed all that. Anyway, <laughs> you you missed an action-packed serial. Oh, but I I do kind of love the uh, episode three cliffhanger because it's another it's another demon summoning thing, and he's and the master's like I summon thee, as well. I summon thee, and the camera craves up, and the master's like, oh oh fuck no, mm -hmm. oh I fucked up. <laughs> what the master fucking up? No. As he usually does, yes. No oh, way. That's mm, don't believe it. Never happens. So this this is Elizabeth Sandifer's point that this is kind of a writer's got to eat moment where part four is basically the cliffhanger is the master summoned the devil, and then part four goes the master unsummons the devil. We wrap up every other plot point and with the cliffhanger, the master summons the devil. Yeah. I, do, I I like how they they establish that the devil has to be summoned three times, and like mm -hmm. so the second time's like, yeah. So uh, when you summon me again, I will judge you at that time. Hey, uh, can can you invite your friend? He's, he's kind of cute. I want to talk to your friend. <laughs> oh, can can you give me a friend my phone number? Yeah, I, I the other one who's just like you. Can you can you? Can can I? Is he single? Yeah. The devil's <laughs> damn bad, y'all. <laughs> but part four does give us the absolutely demented fucking maid a sequence. 
there's a lot we skipped over, like the part where the master tries to rally the town to be like, "Aha! Join me. We can and you can and you can have anything you want, and I can rule." And the guy's like, "Wait, wait! I thought that we were supposed to rule." Oh, you, you stupid assholes! And then he summons the gargoyle and kills the guy. And it's like, "Ah ha ha ha! I'm evil, little baby." Go have fun at your festival. Go have May Day, and it's like, excuse me, this what? Is, this is this is wild. This is some demented wicker man shit that happens here. Excuse <laughs> you. This is some midsummer type shit. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Midsummer is pretty fucked up. <laughs> don't just don't drink the lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> or do. Oh, God. What, fucking Ari Aster. What is your problem? I've seen Maybe two of your Harry. three films. And they fucked me up. But uh, anyway, as I was saying, Kat, did you have anything to add? No. I was just making a okay. joke. Okay. But I love this. The doctor, they've got Morris dancers, and the doctor's trying to get by, and he starts getting whacked by these guys and grabbed by the bats. He's like, uh, Terry, sir, pardon me. Good, good man, pardon me. Mm. And, then one, and then one of the master's goons, and he's dressed up in this coat with like fucking newspaper. <laughs> I don't know what the heck it is. Some. I don't know if it's supposed to be a pagan thing, but this entire sequence is great. They tie him to a pole and they're just like, burn the witch! <laughs> we should kill him! And there's another incredible bit where Benton and uh, Hawthorne are in the bar, the pub, and they, and they see this, and Benton tries to go out, and one of the fucking Morris dancers comes in and has a fucking fight with him. And once again, he still loses the battle, and it's only because Miss Hawthorne has a fucking crystal ball on her, and she she's whacked it with it. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. I got there. <laughs> oh my God, Miss Hawthorne with a crystal ball. That Morris Nestor had a family. So if the doctor is made out of wood, then he must be a duck. <laughs> Well, this entire scene's incredible. She she then runs out and is like, Stop! You cannot burn the great wizard Quee Quai Quad. Which Qui, Quai, and Quad are basically Latin word different Latin ways of saying who? <laughs> who who who? Yeah. And it's so good that this is like Oh, great Kui Kui Quad, use your powers to shatter that lamp. Uh, lamp, I order you to shatter. Because Benton just fucking shot it. No one heard the gunshot? What? Okay. <laughs> got a silencer, oh, and you know it's a movie silencer, so. They're too, yeah, he's using the silencer. And also, they're spooked by the great mystical powers of Kui Kui Quad. This weather vane spin, even though that could have totally been the wind. <laughs> and the guy's not convinced he's holding a gun. And he's like, uh, you should probably look behind you. Ah, like I'm gonna fall for that trick. Run over I my car. I order my familiar to come to me. And you Hey, Chekhov's gun's just shot off. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was Benton's gun, but actually it's Chekhov's because the car moves. He's like, ha ha ha, I will fall for a useless trick. Like, what? Oh, it's, it's such a good bit. I love it. He sure dodged that bullet. But but then, thank you. I, and then, like, the bad guy goes to run off, and uh, whichever the unit guy's name is, I don't know. It's Benton. Runs and jumps off of Betsy to tackle him. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> like, it's just so extra. Like, <laughs> why did you need to just jump off of Betsy? Also, while this is going on, the master is uh, holding a rally. Um, people are leaving the rally early. He's not too happy about it. Um, <laughs> so he, you know, kills the guy with Bach, uh, the gargoyle. Oh, and then, like, he starts doing the full chant, and, like, Joe is there Which and means? watches him do the entire chant, and then 
you know, because of all this evil somehow guys final form because of all the dumbness because of it. <laughs> uh yeah, Joe bungled in here for uh reasons re being well we got to get the companion and protect them somehow mm -hmm. she woke up and she was like i must get to the cavern to help the doctor and it's like cool why it's mm -hmm. like writers gotta eat companions gotta get in trouble oh uh we should probably mention that uh during when did they start doing this what was it was it uh episode two I think it was, I think it was like during episode three, maybe four. Um, uh, around the time of the helicopter, the doctor had been going to the heat uh, the heat barrier. He gave uh, the brigadier and Osgood the plans for this machine, and this entire time they've been building this machine to be able to get through the heat barrier. And I think it's by episode five they're able to get through. Yep. Yeah. So they they take a while and they're doing this the entire time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's wild because yeah, the, the master's doing this double summoning thing, and then they're about to sacrifice a chicken. And Joe and Mikey Yates are hiding, and Joe's like, no, You can't, you can't, it's evil, you can't kill a poor innocent chicken. No, not Henrietta. Well, you bastard, how dare you even imply that? Well, don't worry, Henrietta's fine. They're going to sacrifice Joe instead. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh, and and the demon summoned with the most unfortunate effect. <laughs> I mean, it's, I was watching this with Chris, and we just died laughing at this. I mean, it's green screen. It's seventies Doctor Who. They love their little green screen here. I you mean, can't get over the music. So bad. I I, oh. I, I want to point out around this time, Super Sentai was doing growing effects much better. Yeah. But what kind of a budget did they have compared to Dr. Fucking You? You've seen hey, they were a show. Rider budget. What are you talking about? God. Oh, at the time. <laughs> but this is our demon, Azal, one of the demons who are an alien race who... Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, we, yeah. Haven't even, we haven't even talked about the demons. Well, it's as it's good a time as any to talk about the, the, the main antagonist. The, the title of the episode. We're now... What an hour six in <laughs> too long and well here's counting and so yeah these guys uh treating earth as their scientific experiment giving us technological advancements and whatnot and also as he warns to the master remember atlantis remember what happened to them which there you go that's our third explanation for what happened to atlantis We've covered all three. And what's cool. funny is that literally a year from now, I, I think how it went was they put that line in, and then these two guys who wrote it, because it's two guys who wrote it that they used the synonym Guy Leopold, they're like, hmm, Atlantis, maybe we should use that again. And then they made the Time Monster. Which is equally <laughs> fucking gonzo stupid, but great. When was the Underwater be... Menace again? Uh, Underwater Menace was like a couple years before this. It was a Patrick Troughton. Okay. It didn't have anything to do with them. So they had a Patrick, Patrick Troughton, and then they have totally like, I, like never heard of it or never saw it or something. And then they're like, what if we just casually mention Atlantis? Mm. And then they're like, <clears throat> you know what? I have a great idea. The uh, the continuity back in the day basically was if it if it hasn't happened in the last year, who gives a shit? It was the Doctor's greatest enemy. Yes, yes. it still is. Yes, yes, yes. But this Azal, and he's also voiced by the fella Stephen Thorne, who had gone to voice Omega in Three, three Doctors. The big booming voice. I don't know how much of that came through, but you know, no, 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 yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> Mm. But he was very good at doing that voice. Turning mm -hmm. my volume down. Turning your volume down on me, the greatest. Okay. Turning but, it down. Okay. Ah, we ended up having our, uh, our big confrontation between the doctor and uh, the master. And it's a conversation with the demon. And it's just them talking for 
15 minutes. Oh about boy. Power. And... I kind of love how things play out because the, the the heat shield generator thing finally works. And that drains Azal's power at the same time it drains Box power, which allows the doctor to get in. And also that guy in the newspaper who was like trying to burn the the doctor at the stake. He runs to the church and the, the gargoyle's there and he's like, oh, wait a minute. Gone. <laughs> Wasted. But the entire climax of the episode is the doctor, the master, Joe, and this giant 20-foot fucking demon alien thing. Yes. The master wants the master to battle. battle. And in case you're wondering, yes, Joe is the whismer. Nah. <laughs> oh, by the way, they treated Joe like crap in this special. This is not special. This cereal. cereal. Yeah. yeah. But I guess that's the norm. Yeah, I, I really like Joe Grant. She she gets some good stuff later, but eh. it's not too much for her to do here. Well, aside from the ending, which I guess she technically saves the day. Heck yeah, yeah, you know, Banjo jumped in front of Sinto to be the sacrifice, and Sinto was like, no, me, and then Banjo was like, no, me. Uh, oh, boy, sorry. Are you talking about Kamen Rider or fucking uh, <laughs> Endgame? <laughs> yes. Could also apply to Supernatural. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a whole lot of shit happening. It, it's basically all the action events are units shooting at this garbo and doing jack shit. You know, tap of the wings, five rounds rapid. Oh, let's use a bazooka. Boom. We did it. And it's the, the, the footage reverses. It just comes back together. It's like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Yeah, and then the climax of this is, I should destroy Earth. No, you shouldn't. Give me your power. No, give him your power. No, definitely not. That's the oh. entirety of it. Is yeah. I'm going to give the doctor the power. The doctor's like, no, no I don't want the power. And no, the master's the like, give me your power. It's cool. What is the power? Uh, I, you know, I don't really know. I think it's like the power to uh, control the destiny of the planet or some shit like that. It's it's, it's the power to blow gas. All that wind. <laughs> blow gas. <laughs> Point of the matter I mean, the is, the master already has that, so he doesn't need any more. Point of the He's point of the all, air. the the end result is that Azal tries to kill the doctor with space lightning, and Joe was like, "No, no, he's good. Kill me, not him." And the act of saying this causes Azal to self destruct because it doesn't understand compassion and noble sacrifice. Now, I hate this explanation for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, the first reason is that, um, so the reason that they give is exactly what you said, is at the end, the doctor's like, oh, he doesn't understand, He it was an illogical move, he doesn't understand exactly why Joe would do this, it's like giving a computer the, the wrong information, it's illogical, and blah, 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 blah. You know what I thought is the reason that uh, it, that has all, like, blew up because of this? Mm-hmm. Well, the doctor said that the whole ritual was based off, like, the human feelings of, like, hate and suffering and all that, right? Yeah. And that's how they summoned the de the demon, right? Mm -hmm. Joe just showed incredible compassion and love. That's, like, the opposite. Why couldn't so, that have been the reason that Azel, like, fucking died? Was because there was a sudden influx of love and compassion. This is the rarity. You're advocating for a power of love ending. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And excuse you, I watched Say the Moon. I love Power of Love endings. Point taken. But yeah, this could have been a Power of Love ending where it was like the power of Joe's incredible love for the Doctor. You know. I mean, she hangs out with the man when he keeps like horribly berating her all the damn time. She must love him in some way. Oh, yeah. I mean, fucking, we haven't seen... <laughs> Oh, you haven't seen their their intro in Terror of the Auton Seas like No. But I did see her wiki, which basically she was described as loving him in a way uh mm. that was different than her husband, but you know, still very deeply. Yeah, yeah. They have a uh kinship issue though. 
So it's like, she obviously loves this man, so like, the idea of not using the power of fucking love to be able to defeat this very negative being. I'm sorry, oh. but fuck you, writers. <laughs> I, I I don't know why but I'm thinking of that one image. I tried I tried to defeat my enemies with the power of love. Having failed that, I decided to use the power of incredible violence. I'm going to defeat you with the power of love and friendship in this gun I found. <laughs> Basically, love and peace. Love and peace. So they blow up the church. They so the church blows up, which is hilarious because the BBC actually got complaints where they were like, "I can't believe you would blow up a perfectly innocent country church for a Doctor Who," which it was a model. It's only <laughs> they a were model. So convinced by it, they were like, "How dare you actually blow up a church, you innocent?" Speaking of models that blow up, um, we should mention that the inside of the Devil's Hump there was also a spaceship that uh, the demon had come in on, which. Uh, Apparently, according to some timey-wimey bullshit, the demon can either be extremely small or extremely big, um, mm -hmm. and their spaceship is extremely small. Uh, that's inside the Devil's Hump. It also blows up because of self-destruct. But we don't see that because they only had the budget to blow up one thing. It's yes. And then we get the greatest master escape attempt I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Broke! Oh God! Just fucking throws his cloak over Benton and makes a break. I for it. died laughing, and Chris looked up because she was playing a game, and she's like, "What? What happened?" I rewound it, and then we both died laughing. <laughs> and it doesn't matter because of the doctor's remote control. <laughs> he like gets so in Jesse and starts driving off, and the doctor's like, "You know what? Nah, it's okay, Brigadier. I, I got, got this. <laughs> Don't hurt Bessie." Yeah, he shoots at go. What are you doing? You're gonna hit the car. <laughs> but yeah, the car comes back, the master puts his hands up, and after 25 episodes, he has finally been arrested. And everyone has a lovely dance, and Yates is like, Hey, bring it in. Care for a dance? I'd rather a pint. By, by the way, I saw none of this because the, the episodes glitched out here too, like before the, the demon killed itself. <laughs> Here, you know you know the whole things on you know all of classic doctor who's like on like tubi yeah and brit box and um other uh, places TV. yeah sorry I'm... <laughs> and yar yeah. har fiddle dd means mm. so not I, that, I that think... we not that we are promoting those wink wink nudge nudge and that's well hey i'm i'm not i don't know about you y'all but I watched it on a perfectly legal copy of the Doctor Who Season 8 Blu-ray collection that I have on my shelf. So, And I purchased with my own money. So I, I think that's about all we had to say about the demons. So uh, who would like to go I have one other thing to say before we continue oh, on. Uh, oh, apparently please. at one point in the script, they cut out the chap with the wings there, five rounds rapid line. That is a crime. <laughs> Absolute crime. Thank God they put it back in. But anyways, uh, how about Kachiri goes first? Yeah, <laughs> I've seen better stories about demons. I I don't know how else to do uh, to explain it, but yeah. <laughs> that, that's I, all you got. Yeah, no, this this wasn't that great. I I understand some people may love this because it somehow got like top ten on a list of sixty stories. I don't know the selection of stories, but yeah. Uh, well, we'll we'll give it a uh, what's the opposite of a compliment sandwich? A shit sandwich. Something a little less grass. <laughs> but uh, a shit yeah, sandwich. Because you know, I, I, cause, hey, uh, I a know, human I centipede. Like oh jeez, I I, I, I kind of <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I still like. It. I uh, I kind of like the this one. Uh, you know, it's I would it's not my favorite John Perkley of all time, but you know, it's above average, I suppose. It's uh, got neat concepts, albeit not entirely explained. It's got some nice set pieces. It's got fucking paganism and devil summoning, and that entire shit with Queequan Quad, which is incredible. 
and some great setup and payout and some iconic lines. It's you know, it's the John Pertwee era Doctor. This is this is kind of you know, it's baseline Pertwee era stuff. It's got all of that, so it's you know, it's, it's not bad. Cat, I disagree. It is that bad. It's like really. I know that they had a set amount of episodes that they had to fill, and, like, I, I'm sure that they, you know, writers got to eat and all that, but good God, this did not need to be five episodes. It just didn't. Mm. This could have been cut down so much, and it's like, uh, that's one of the weak points of all these Doctor Who serials from Classic Who, is there's so many of these where it did not need to be that long, and it would have been so much stronger if it was shorter in so many ways. Um... Obviously, Roger Delgado is still fantastic. He's a great version of the Master. Um, John Pertwee, always great. Um, I still don't know too much about Joe, but she was pretty good in this. I do wish that she got a better rap in this, just because, you know, she kind of meh. Um, they weren't all that clear on the magic versus science portion of the whole thing. There was a lot of it, you know, like Miss Hawthorne controlling the quote-unquote elementals, which I kind of explained myself, but I shouldn't have to explain myself. Um, there's a the whole, you know, Joe waking up and saying, I have to get to the cavern! And it's like, cool. Why? Um, makes no sense. You know, the dude at the beginning dying, why did he die? You know, stuff like that. It, 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 there's so much in this that doesn't make sense, and it seems to be just for, like, the horror element of it. And I don't know, it just doesn't really work for me. Um, mm. You know, especially since this apparently it premiered in May and June. Huh. Um, so it's like, it's definitely not one of my favorites. Um, it's got a good amount of humor. It's got an interesting plot that I think could work again if it was shorter. So I think that would be my ultimate uh, my ultimate um, conclusion is if this was shorter I would like it a lot more but because of the length it is at it weakens it a lot we should get you on that 90 minute edit and see if it does anything yeah. for you yeah uh, and, um, I, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a radio broadcast I think it's from Rain no just ignore it just hit, hit uh, decline no no it's, <laughs> no it's too late it's too late um, uh, yeah, here, here he is here he is Hey folks, sorry I couldn't be on the podcast this week. There's this weird heat barrier and I can't seem to get through it. But I haven't managed to jimmy up this device so I can talk to you about the demons for a couple of minutes. And in my opinion, the demons is a curate's egg of a story. Rather appropriate because the master, you know, dresses a member of the church in this episode. Uh, curate's egg just means it's good in places. And there are parts of this story that are that are good. Roger Delgado is a great master. He's always a great master. His, his escape at the end in Bessie is hilarious. Uh, I like the gargoyle as well. That's a good monster. It's a bit weird that its, it's method of attack is to just jump cut people out of existence, but I'll, I'll go along with it. The gargoyle, I think, is, is a better monster than Azal, who looks the part but actually doesn't do a, a whole lot. There's some iconic lines in this, of course. You know, chap of the winds there, Jenkins. Five rounds rapid. That's a great line. And, of course, the best scene of the whole thing is the Doctor pretending to be the Great Wizard, Quee Quai Quad, which just means who, 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 <laughs> in different languages. <laughs> but it's great, because he's, he's, he's like trying to, um, you know, display his powers as like, um, I will make that weather man move, and Benton just shoots it with a pellet gun. <laughs> and then Bessie and the remote control just running over um, all the Master's goons. Morris men are evil, by the way. Ken Dobb was absolutely right when he said that they want locking up. So I, I love the fact that, you know, the Masters villa minions in this, or some of them anyway, are like evil Morris men. Now for the bits that I didn't enjoy about the demons, it's it's not aged particularly well. I mean, okay, it's, it's a classic Doctor Who story from the 1970s, but Horror of Fang Rot, which we did um, last time, looked old, but actually, you know, stood up. This doesn't quite stand up to the modern day. It's too long. It didn't need to be five parts. There's a lot of filler in those five parts. And the characters are not memorable, with the possible exception of Miss Hawthorne, the White Witch. She was, she was quite good. 
And she, of course, cracked that Morris man over the head with the crystal ball. That was great. And then the ending, you have this perfect setup for a power of love ending that would actually make sense for once with Joe, you know, sacrificing herself for the Doctor and it backfires on Azal and he blows up. And then they ruin it by saying, oh, no, it wasn't a power of love at all, Joe. Uh, he couldn't understand you sacrificing yourself for me, so he self-destructed. Despite the fact that Azal says the only way to beat me, the only way for me to, to, to leave is I give my power or I destroy the Earth. I guess they found a secret third option. But it's not its not terrible. I, I enjoyed it. It's a perfectly cromulent serial of John Pertwee's Doctor Who. So that's it, really. All I wanted to say about the demons. Uh, sorry I couldn't make it to the show again. Hey, does anyone else hear that beeping set? Oh, wow. There we go. And, he, and he's even going to get through the heat barrier. But before he does... I, I just want to say, Kat, that also uh, I, I do agree with you on pacing, uh, but that's more towards like six parters. This just about gets away with it for me, but I understand the criticism because I do feel that way about a lot of the six part stories where it's like, yeah, you obviously are taking your time here because you have to, not because the story needs it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just um, like. When you hear that you have to get through five separate episodes, it becomes one of the things where it's like, oh, God, okay, let's see where the writers got to eat. Because um, it's like, it seems like it's really, really hard for them to fill all five of those episodes, something, because the stories never seem to fill the entire time, and I wish that they would. Do also keep in mind that they these were airing at the rate of one episode a week, so they were very leisurely with their pace. This well. is also true. We're, we're watching it all in one fucking go, so it's not how they intended it to air. But, anyway, that, is, that does wrap up The Daemons, and uh, uh, since I picked it, one of you two gets to fight over what the hell we're doing next. I don't know. I, I, I go for it. Oh, do I get to pick it? Yeah. Fear her. Ah, so that up? was going to be my pick. So yeah, let's do it. Fuck either way. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. This this cannot be as bad as people make it out to be. It cannot. I don't believe. Uh, Ray's gonna come back and be like, "What the fuck?" Is okay. That's not a bit. You're really picking fear her. Yes. Bring it, you son of a bitch, and fucking let's go. It's forty five <laughs> minutes. It's like. It's like a third of the time this took. This will be easy. <laughs> I didn't even pause. It's just like immediate. Well, because it's been on your mind since, uh, <laughs> what, two weeks since, ago? This is the last time. Yes, yeah, it's the last two, time I was me, like, as soon as it's my turn, I'm doing fear her if nobody else picks it. <laughs> yeah, no, so, same thought, same thought. Yep. I'm pretty sure I had it on my list. I'm trying to find it here. My desktop is a fucking mess of a thing so trying to I find mean how it. many more stories do we have overall because we're we're getting we're getting there. I oh, did have it on my list of few you, movies I like surprisingly. Do. Yeah there's a lot of classic who left and shit too but okay uh next time on Doctor Who reviews David Tennant in fear her one of uh, considered one of the worst fucking episodes of the show. I don't think it can be that bad but we'll find out indeed Hey, Fresno, where can you find us lovely people? I'm so glad you asked, Fresno. <laughs> you can find <laughs> us on Twitter at Reviews Doctor, uh, individually at Concave Server, at Freezing Inferno, at Rain, and Puteria.BlueSky.com. Or threads. Or threads. I mean, it's... I mean if, you, if you ping me on Twitter, I'll see it. We're, we're ha right. Apparently, we're having a great Blue Sky an exodus to blue sky because people are like getting fed up with mr musk right from the soul when yeah, they start yeah. integrating blue sky into other programs that's when i'll move because unfortunately I, right now it's the most accessible i don't think i don't think they're going to do a blue sky just because they don't want stuff like algorithms or stuff like that with it uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, also on Twitch at rainy at twitch.tv slash rainiac, twitch.tv slash the Kuchiri or just the Kuchiri? It's the Kuchiri. They won't let me drop the D. Yeah, right. I've, I've tried dropping the the for 
ever. Twitch.tv slash concave usurpers, Stardew Sundays, twitch.tv slash freezing inferno, Mysteria Mondays, slash Monday Night Fresno. And oh yes, don't forget the books. Please do be buying the Tower to the Tower Through the Trees by Sean Dillon. Back to the Eleventh Hour Volumes One and Two by Lena Fenrira McTeer and The Shadow of the Gallifreyan, published by Aldrich Books, featuring flash fiction from Sean Dillon, Lena Fenrira McTeer, and myself. Also, check out Fred Spencer and Ransopblogspot.com for 60, yep. yet another 16 screens for Halloween. Just watched the movie Abigail yesterday. It fucking ruled. Those are fucking onions. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were going to break me with it on the podcast. Oh, that's what that. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Oh, God. Yeah, that fucking idiot. Uh, also, if you have Amazon Prime and if you're in the US, watch The Edge of Sleep. It's really, really good. I do not live in the U.S. or have that, but I've heard. I'll find things. a way. Life, life, uh, finds a way. <laughs> Say goodnight, Fresno. Don't mind if I do, Fresno. Good night, <laughs> Thank Fresno. you all very much for watching this uh, podcast review slash thing. Uh, have a good day. Have a happy spooky season. Uh, give good candy to kids in well dressed costumes because they deserve it for walking around town in the dark and uh we'll be seeing you next time for ooh, it's fear her until then everyone bye for now bye bye bye